Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers traffic stops, stop and identify laws, and obstruction, and is brought to us by the Bateau Size channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to take a moment to announce that ATA is on Spotify. You can watch or listen to full episodes by clicking on the link below. Available now on the Spotify app and Spotify.com. On September 22nd, 2020, 2022, motorist Demetrius Kern was driving on Mayfield Road in Cleveland Heights, Ohio, when Officer Carly Lewis of the Cleveland Heights Police Department initiated a traffic stop on the vehicle in front of Mr. Kern's car that almost resulted in a three-way collision. Mr. Kern pulled over behind Officer Lewis and the other vehicle she stopped in order to speak with her about her driving, and the interaction that followed was captured by police body cameras. Stand by. Send me another unit because another party does not know how to yield to uh, license sirens and he's sitting here reporting me. Say they almost ran him off the road. I apologize. You almost ran me off the road. I initiated my lights and sirens. I didn't hear anything. What, you was your music on? Because I had the lights oh, and sirens man. on, sir. Yes, sir. You so, apologize. I apologize. He stopped abruptly. I'm okay, I'm not wrong. Because he stopped abruptly, causing me to stop abruptly, causing you to stop abruptly. And I apologize for that. However, the lights and sirens were on. I initiated lights and sirens. If there's something wrong and you actually did it, all you say, my bad. And I did. I just said, I said, my bad. I said, I activated a traffic, I initiated a traffic stop in a marked vehicle with lights and sirens. If you didn't hear the sirens or see the lights, I don't, I... I mean, you call back up for your safety, but... Well, I well you don't pull up behind an officer on a traffic stop. You're not even, you don't even know what's going you're on. You're right, I don't. So why are you saying that? Because I'm here, and what you're doing right now is against the law. ran me off the road. Okay, well, then you should have pulled over for lights and sirens. You said it on the radio that you that you didn't yield. And it's on dash cam, I'm assuming. It's just a disconnect, man. Sir, I'll tell you what, let her finish her business, and then we can sit down and talk like we're adults. We're good, I'm going to let him go. Yeah. What? I'm sorry, what was your last name? My last name? Yeah. Why do you need my last name? Because I'm asking who I'm talking to. You asked me who you were talking to. You're not going to get under arrest because what you're doing is you're going to arrest. Listen. If you're doing something illegal, I can charge you for interference. Just give me your last name. Why? Because I'm conducting business with you right now. I'm not being attorney. Where my friend is. I want to be. 10 4. That's not going to be the best. What's your RS? Stand by. What's your reasonable articulation of my crime? I'm going to get rid of him. I'll explain to you, okay? Doing what you're doing right now? No, sir. She almost ran me off the road. Again, you didn't yield to lights and siren. You came she out. She was next to me and stopped and almost ran me off the road. Okay. What are you talking okay, about? Okay, listen to me. You asked my, my reasonable articulable suspicion. It's I'm, not a probable not cause. Arrest. If you arrest me, you violate my rights. I don't want to arrest you. We have to you ID you. You want to violate my rights. That's what you're going to okay, do? We have to ID you. You understand that? Yes, we do. All right, I'm a videotape. Sergeant Neftali Wolf claims that the officers had probable cause to detain Mr. Kern because he failed to yield the lights and sirens. Under Section 4511.45 of the Revised Code, when a motor vehicle used by a public law enforcement officer is giving an audible signal by siren, quote, no driver of any other vehicle shall fail to yield the right of way, immediately drive, if practical, to a position parallel to and as close as possible to the right edge or curb of the highway clear of any intersection and stop and remain in that position until the public safety vehicle or coroner's vehicle has passed. Although there is no footage of the instigation of the traffic stop, based on Officer Lewis and Mr. Kern's accounts, it seems that Officer Lewis initiated a traffic stop with the driver who was traveling in front of Mr. Kern before she changed lanes and drove in front of Mr. Kern's car to pull over the other car. But the other driver stopped abruptly when Officer Lewis initiated the stop, and the three vehicles nearly collided. While Officer Lewis claimed to have her siren on, Mr. Kern claimed not to hear it. And although it is impossible to determine whether Mr. Kern violated section 4511.45 without video footage of the incident, it seems likely that even if Officer Lewis did have her siren activated, he did not have enough time to yield due to the quick time frame of the narrowly avoided collision. However, if a court concluded that Officer Lewis was giving an audible signal by siren, and Mr. Kern had sufficient time to yield and failed to do so, it would likely determine 
determined that the officers had probable cause to detain him. It should also be noted that Section 4511.45 states that, quote, This section does not relieve the driver of a public safety vehicle from the duty to drive with due regard for the safety of all persons and property upon the highway. Given the seemingly dangerous manner in which Officer Lewis initiated the traffic stop, it is certainly possible that a court would hold that she violated her duty by driving recklessly, even if she had both her lights and sirens activated. Okay, we got you on camera too. I'm call, they can come get the car, you're violating my rights. Come getting, who's getting what car? They can come, you're going to, you're going to radio you another right? car here, I got a male who's obstructing. No, I'm not. I don't know if he, he's she refusing to identify himself. So I'll take a report on it, but I need your ID. Listen, talk to me. I understand you and I and that gentleman, we all just saw what happened, okay? I call for another person because I have a man getting out of a car walking towards me. You know how society is. I know how society is. Now listen, I'm asking you to identify yourself so I can let my dispatcher know who I'm out with. If you don't identify yourself, that is obstruction. You are the one that came out. Obstruction is a secondary crime. Obst- what crime obst- did I commit? There's no crime, but I'm want so to. No crime, I'm identifying to you. Okay. Thank you. Officer Lewis tells Mr. Kern that she needs to see his driver's license, even though she does not suspect him of committing a crime. As we have discussed before on ATA, many states, including Ohio, have enacted so-called stop and identify statutes that require individuals to identify themselves in certain circumstances, often during Terry stops. Under Section 2921.29 of the Ohio Revised Code, quote, No person who is in a public place shall refuse to disclose the person's name, address, or date of birth when requested by a law enforcement officer who reasonably suspects the person is committing, has committed, or is about to commit a criminal offense. Additionally, according to section 4507.35 of the Ohio Revised Code, quote, the operator of a motor vehicle shall display the operator's driver's license upon demand of any peace officer, and, now quoting again, when a demand is properly made and the operator has the operator's driver's license on or about the operator's person, the operator shall not refuse to display the license. As the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of Ohio explained in the 2017 case of Johnson v. Hasu, a demand for a driver's license under this statute is properly made when, now quoting, an officer has a reasonable suspicion that the driver is violating the law. Now, while Mr. Kern had already stopped and exited his vehicle, it is still possible that a court would conclude that the officers had the authority to demand to see his license in compliance with this statute if they had reasonable suspicion to believe that he committed a traffic offense while he was still driving. Although they are unusual, courts have recognized the legality of traffic stops that occur without an officer pulling over the vehicle. For instance, in the 2004 case of Thornton v. United States, the Supreme Supreme Court upheld the search of a vehicle stemming from a detention for a traffic violation where the officer did not approach the individual or demand to see an individual's driver's license until after he parked in a parking lot and got out of his vehicle. Likewise, relying on the Thornton decision, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals stated in the 2011 case of U.S. v. Randolph that, quote, an officer may initiate a traffic stop after the driver has stopped the car and exited the vehicle. Therefore, it is possible that a court would conclude that the officers could conduct a traffic stop on Mr. Kern, even though he was already out of his vehicle, by detaining him and demanding to see his driver's license. However, as with the stop and identify statute, both the Constitution and Ohio state law require that the officers have at least reasonable suspicion that Mr. Kern was violating the law in order to detain and identify him. We will discuss whether the officers had reasonable suspicion to suspect Mr. Kern of obstruction later in this episode. But for now, it is important to recognize that unless reasonable suspicion existed that he had committed a traffic violation or criminal offense, he was not required to identify himself or display his driver's license under either of the relevant Ohio statutes. And under no circumstances was he obligated to provide his social security number. I need your driver's license. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to arrest you. If you don't identify yourself. It, she just said it was no crime. It Listen. Is a crime. Obstructing is a what? crime. Obstructing is a crime. You identify yourself, guys. She almost ran me off the road. And then, then, well, then I still have to identify you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Okay. Well, I'm going to call it in for the car. You can arrest me. Okay, turn around. Because I didn't do anything. Okay, turn around. Turn around. I didn't do anything. Listen, just all I you have to do is. I don't have my ID with me. Okay, what's your cell phone? You need to get a person. That's all we asked for. For what? 
but because I need to let my kids back right now. It's not a big deal. What's your last name, sir? Kern, man. Kern? You know what happened. Why are you letting him do this? He's a sergeant. He's violating my rights. He is not. He didn't identify yourself. You're going to get a ticket when he sent you on your way. You have valid driver's license? Yeah, I do. You violate my rights, man. Were you going to get a ticket for interfering with the traffic? How did I interfere? She almost ran me off and you could have pulled off and waited and called and called. I did wait when she said wait. You were out here talking to her. Have a seat. Mr. Kern, just Don't have a push me, man. Have a seat. Why are you so full of machismo, man? Dude, have a seat. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting up your bull****, okay? Have a seat. What's wrong with you, man? Have a seat. I'm sitting down. All the way in. If he he's checks... He's going Or he's getting a ticket you're gonna, I don't... So this is what happened. Uh -huh. That vehicle matched a description of the vehicle from Weird yesterday okay. i saw it i initiated traffic stop okay. that person instead of like pulling over he stopped abruptly okay. Okay. this guy was very close to him okay. and we did we almost caught we almost did get into an accident okay. because that driver stopped so abruptly like i did yes there's no extent about this uh, okay he's getting a ticket for, for, for the vehicle, the it, it, listen i don't feel i need to give him a ticket for that it okay. I'm well, cool with just, just Okay, I mean, I'm cool with letting him go. Like he just I didn't he's understand. In, he's in handcuffs. And he's being he a jerk. He's, he obstructed. He refused to identify himself. I'm not going to sit out here okay. and argue with somebody for an hour the legalities of it. You can come to court. Okay. So he gets a ticket for obstructing failure to identify himself. After Mr. Kern refuses to identify himself, Sergeant Wolf places him under arrest for obstruction. Under Section 2921.31 of the Ohio Revised Code, quote, No person with purpose to prevent, obstruct, or delay the performance by a public official of any authorized act within the public official's official capacity shall do any act that hampers or impedes a public official in the performance of the public official's lawful duties. In some situations, courts have found that interfering with a traffic stop can rise to the level of obstruction under this statute. For instance, in the 2011 case of Douglas v. Swing, which was decided by the U.S. District Court in the Southern District of Ohio, Officer John Swing blocked an individual's driveway with his cruiser while conducting a routine traffic stop. In response, the home's occupant pulled alongside the parked cruiser with his vehicle, backed up, and angled his vehicle so that his headlights were pointing at the car the officer had pulled over, then revved his engine, drove between the parked cruiser and the stopped vehicle, into a yard and began yelling at the officer. Based on these facts, the court concluded that, quote, the undisputed facts make it readily apparent that the officers had adequate probable cause to arrest him for obstructing Officer Swing's traffic stop. However, the Swing case is highly distinguishable from this situation, as Mr. Kern parked well behind the cruiser and the stopped vehicle, did not interrupt Officer Lewis while she handled the traffic stop, and waited until she came over to him to speak with her. Therefore, it seems likely that a court would find that Mr. Kern did not commit obstruction when he stopped his vehicle to talk to Officer Lewis about her driving. Additionally, a court would likely conclude that the officers did not have probable cause to arrest Mr. Kern for obstruction based on his refusal to identify himself. As the 3rd District Court of Appeals of Ohio summarized in the 2017 case of State v. Pierce, quote, Ohio courts have consistently held that in order to violate the obstructing official business statute, a defendant must engage in some affirmative or overt act, and, now quoting again, failure to give the police requested information is generally viewed as an omission rather than as an overt act. Likewise, as the United States District Court in the Northern District of Ohio explained in the 2003 case, of Walsh v. Erie County Department of Job and Family Services, the obstruction statute requires that, quote, the officer must be in the performance of an authorized act. And, now quoting again, that requirement cannot be met where the officer's act is not authorized by law. For this reason, a court would likely conclude that even if Mr. Kern's actions could form the basis of an obstructing charge, the officers were not engaged in an authorized act if they did not have the necessary reasonable suspicion to demand that Mr. Kern identify himself. You guys got a Mr. lawsuit Kern, coming. Just hang on. Just you got a lawsuit this. coming. Listen, let me explain to you. Mm -hmm. Don't get out of the car yet. The sergeant wants me to give you a ticket for obstruction, okay? I'm not going to do anything else. I, listen, he's the boss. This is, he is the boss. I don't have to refuse if I didn't commit a crime. This isn't a stop in ID state. At this point, it is a traffic stop because you're you out on a traffic stop. You almost ran me off the road. Mr. You Kern, we just had that conversation. I did not almost run you off the road. That, that Tesla has cameras in it. So okay. You guys are going to pay for this. Okay, that's fine. Right.
Mr. Curran, I apologize. The sergeant's telling me to do this, so. You know, like, I know I didn't obstruct. He asked for your information and I, you didn't I give it to him. To Listen, I'm just doing what I'm told to do, all right? When asked to identify himself, he refused. He was upset, rightfully so. I, it was not. It was whatever. Why are they animals? Here's your property. Hold on, let me get this hand. Sure. Do you want to sign or are you going to refuse? I'm about it. All right. I'm going to give you a copy of it. You guys violated my rights. Do you know? Well, we'll ha all be in court. You're probably the only good cop on the force. It's, I'm not trying to be a bad cop. I was literally not trying to even have any of this happen, and it's I did still, apologize. You apologize, but you're following his, his directives. He's a sergeant. Yeah, sir. but still, like you, you swore oath to the Constitution. Right. And you know what's right and wrong. And sometimes you gotta stand up to people. Listen. Say, no. If I All was right. being detained, I had no choice but to give you my ID. That's why I specifically asked. Yeah. Am I being detained? And if I'm not being detained, yeah. I'm free to go. And right. it's in the situation. Well, I right have, now you're free to go. Yeah. On Sergeant Wolf's order, Officer Lewis issued a citation to Mr. Kern for obstruction of official business under Section 525.07 of the Cleveland Heights Ordinances, which mimics the language of the state obstruction statute, and informed him he was free to go. The charge was dismissed 11 days later at the prosecutor's request. A few hours after the traffic stop, Mr. Kern filed a complaint against Sergeant Wolf. Cleveland Heights Police Chief Chris Britton investigated the complaint and ordered Sergeant Wolf to attend a de-escalation training session. Additionally, Cleveland Heights Mayor Khalil Sarin announced that as a result of this interaction, he established an oversight bureau within the police department to allow for executive oversight of the Division of Police and update the department's policies and procedures for, quote, receiving, investigating, resolving, and reporting complaints related to police conduct. Mr. Kern has hired an attorney to pursue legal action regarding this interaction and started a GoFundMe page to raise money for his legal fees. As of the date of writing this episode, no lawsuit has been filed. Overall, Sergeant Wolf gets an F for maintaining a hostile and aggressive demeanor throughout the interaction, demanding that Mr. Kern identify himself when he was likely not legally obligated to do so, and arresting him for obstruction when the case law clearly establishes that an individual cannot be convicted of obstruction for merely refusing to identify themselves. Despite the fact that Officer Lewis repeatedly gave him opportunities to de-escalate the situation and let Mr. Kern go, Sergeant Wolf insisted that he be issued a citation because he was already in handcuffs. In this interaction, Sergeant Wolf's un necessarily aggressive behavior transformed what could have been a productive conversation with a concerned citizen into an alienating and negative encounter, and demonstrates why de-escalation is such an essential skill for law enforcement to possess and practice. Officer Lewis gets a C, because although she was generally less antagonistic toward Mr. Kern than Sergeant Wolf was, she repeatedly demonstrated a fundamental misunderstanding of when officers have the authority to arrest citizens for refusing to identify themselves themselves, and ultimately was responsible for issuing the obstruction citation to Mr. Kern. Although she made it clear that she was merely acting on Sergeant Wolf's orders, Mr. Kern was correct in his assertion that Officer Lewis also swore an oath to uphold the Constitution, and this may have been an occasion where more pushback was warranted. Additionally, although I cannot say for certain what happened during the initiation of the traffic stop, it seems likely that Officer Lewis drove in a possibly reckless manner, or at the very least, a highly discourteous manner, and I would encourage her to consider the impact of her decisions on other drivers on the road when conducting future traffic stops. Mr. Kern gets an A-, minus because although he maintained a relatively respectful demeanor, filed a complaint against Sergeant Wolf immediately after the incident, and is pursuing appropriate legal action, he demonstrated some confusion regarding Ohio's identification laws, as he argued that Ohio was not a stop-and-identify state, and that he only had to identify himself if he had committed a crime, when, in fact, Ohio is generally considered to be a stop and ID state because the law requires individuals to identify themselves when officers have reasonable suspicion to believe they have committed an offense, regardless of whether or not they actually committed any crimes. Additionally, it is important to note that many of the legal questions that arose during this encounter center around whether Mr. Kern failed to yield the lights and sirens, and I cannot make a determination regarding this issue without being able to see what actually happened. That being said, 
I commend Mr. Kern for his commitment to defending his rights, and encourage him to continue to study and learn more about the Constitution and Ohio's state statutes. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content. Thank you.